April 18th, 2022. Habcast 283. Mm-hmm. Episode 283. Let's go. Of course, I have a few things to share with you guys. An evening of reflection. Shall we? R.I.P. DJ K. Slay. DJ K. Slay, maven of New York hip hop, dies from COVID-19 complications. DJ K. Slay, an influential member of the New York hip hop scene, whose raucous mixtapes became legendary, has died from COVID-19 complications. His family confirmed his death through a statement released by New York hip hop radio station Hot 97. He was 55. K. Slay, whose real name was Keith Grayson, was a DJ at Hot 97, but he had been a star of the genre since the early 1990s when mixtapes he produced feature up-and-comers and superstar rappers like Jay-Z and later Eminem. A young K. Slay appeared in the seminal 1983 documentary Style Wars, which explored New York's burgeoning hip-hop scene. Then, an East Harlem graffiti artist, primarily using the name Dez, he tagged the sides of subway train cars, calling himself the king of the number three train. His depth of experience as a young artist growing up during the rise of Grandmaster Flash and the Sugar Hill Gang, and later as a producer in his own right, introduced them to major artists. He released over 500 mixtapes in 10 years since his first in 1994 per previous reports featuring artists going tit to tat with each other on tracks rarely found on the radio. The Drama King. (laughs) Couldn't wait for those mixtapes. The mixtapes K. Slay executive produced reverberated far outside New York. In 2003, the New York Times said that high profile hip hop beef in the last three years began or ended on a K-Slay tape, including tips between Nas and Jay-Z. K-Slay took to calling himself the drama king because of the years-long feuds that began and later sometimes ended on his tapes. His debut album, 2003's The Street Sweeper, Volume 1, was the first marketed to a national audience. It featured 50 Cent, Nas, and Eminem, among many others, performing songs primarily produced by other artists, along with his follow-up. He also worked closely with the artist Papoose, with whom he left Jive Records to record independently. Now, I remember some of the mixtapes, but I mostly remember him doing a lot of work with Papoose. The game was boring until I came around, he told the Times in 2003. I bought the controversy back. I bought the game back to life. For years, Casely hosted the Drama Hour, on Hot 97, I remember that, on which he interviewed countless hip-hop stars and aired out or inflamed beef between rappers. In January, K. Slay's family announced he was in the hospital with COVID-19. His brothers later told Hip Hop DX that he had a long time to go before he could start his recovery. Talent manager, WAC 100, who called K. Slay his brother, friend, business partner, and mentor, said the two had been friends for 20 years. For months, he updated followers on K. Slay's health and progress in the hospital. In a statement on its website, Hot 97 said it was shocked and saddened by the loss of our beloved K. Slay. A cultural icon, the street sweeper K. Slay was more than just a DJ. To us, he was family and a vital part of what made Hot 97 the successful station it is today, the station said. My thoughts and prayers go out to friends and family members of the drama king, DJ K. Slay, R.I.P. Ex-con just out of prison goes on unprovoked Upper East Side meth rampage attacking five strangers. (laughs) You do know they have drugs in prison, right? You didn't have to wait that whole time to go on a full-blown binge. And ex-con sprung from prison 
a month ago went on a meth fueled rampage in Manhattan Monday morning. What you could do when you get out of jail, stabbing one stranger in the back, bashing a man and woman with a bottle, and punching out two men, including a 65 year old who suffered a serious head injury, police said. He didn't go for a job application or nothing. He just went straight for the meth like it was writing them letters when he was locked up. The 32-year-old attacker, the right side of his forehead, covered with facial tattoos. I guess he can go back and get the left side done now, right? <laughs> Didn't say a word to his victims. He had crystal methamphetamine on him when he was arrested after his last victim, a 22-year-old doing work for NYCHA, New York City Housing Authority, pointed him out to a nearby cop. Police said the spree played out between 8.04 a.m. and 8.32 a.m. in four separate attacks on the Upper East Side in East Harlem. For someone on meth, those 28 minutes probably felt like three days. <laughs> the most seriously injured victim appears to be the 65-year-old man who was knocked out at East 96th Street and second half and hit his head on the ground. Medics rushed him to New York Presbyterian Will Cornell Medical Center, where he's listed in serious condition. The attacker headed north after that, confronting a 66-year-old woman as she exited her parked car at East 99th Street and second half. The attacker struck her in the head with a bottle. Police said a 37-year-old homeless man walking by told police he was also hit with the bottle when he tried to intervene. Video shows he did not come to the woman's aid as he claimed, but was nonetheless randomly attacked, police said. You know this is New York when even a bum was trying to get his 15 minutes and the video said you didn't step in to save her. You're a victim too. He was cut above his right eye and on the back of his head and was taken to Metropolitan Hospital. The woman was taken to Harlem Hospital with a cut on her head. The attacker headed back to the Upper East Side, confronting his next victim, a 45-year-old man, walking to his car at East 91st Street and York Avenue. The assailant allegedly slashed the victim on the right side of his neck and plunged a knife into his back, the blade breaking off. Meth makes you incredibly strong. The victim managed to keep his wits, get in his car, and drive to Metropolitan Hospital with the knife still in his back. He is expected to recover. The rampage ended a few minutes after that when a suspect punched a 22-year-old man affiliated with NYCHA, New York City Housing Authority. Charges against the suspect who lives in the Bronx are pending. Yeah, he might be up for attempted murder or even murder depending on how it plays out with that old man that hit his head, a manslaughter or something. Police said he has 27 arrests on his record including nine that are sealed and two that were voided. He served two stints in prison, public records show. He served more than five years for selling drugs near a Manhattan school and was paroled in July 2018. Records show after a criminal contempt conviction, also in Manhattan, he was sentenced to up to three years in prison, but was conditionally released on March 14th. The suspect has Alicia tattooed on his left cheek, on his right forehead is the full name of another woman. Would that woman's name somehow be Crystal? Woman pepper sprayed, robbed after New Jersey road rage incident. Oh, little Garden State hospitality. A woman was pepper sprayed and robbed following a road rage incident in Newark. It just sounds about right. Police said and they're hoping your surveillance image of the suspect will lead to an arrest. It happened just before 2 p.m. Friday in the area of 14th Avenue and South 12th Street, where police say one driver accused another of running a red light. She got out of her car to yell at the other woman who recorded the interaction. Let's be clear, this woman is a victim, but before we grab our cell phones, Let's start making sure our self-defense is a priority. She is described as a black female who was wearing an allied security uniform and driving a black four-door BMW. <laughs> Not allied security, as if that nap in Walgreens wasn't stressful enough.
Allied Security identified the employee. Yep, we already knew it was her before you called and said she has been suspended. Our hearts go out to the victim of this incident, the company said in a statement. When Allied Universal became aware of this matter over the weekend, our leadership immediately reached out to Newark Police Department. Allied Universal has suspended an employee pending a full investigation because the investigation is still ongoing. We can't comment further. Central Florida parents lose hundreds of dollars in Easter egg delivery scam. (laughs) There's a Grinch for every holiday. There really is. (laughs) Some parents and children in Central Florida woke up on Easter morning to find no eggs in their yard after they paid for them to be delivered. Parents in Claremont and Mineola said someone used social media to scam families out of hundreds of dollars on a religious holiday. How hurtful of person you must be to do this to a bunch of kids, parent Mitzi Cohen said, who fell victim to the scam. The parents saw Egg My Yard flyers circulating in Facebook groups. They're lucky they weren't buying vandalism because that's exactly what it sounds like. It advertised prices to order Easter eggs filled with methamphetamine or fentanyl. No, (laughs) filled with candy or toys. Come on, it's Central Florida. You think I'm not going to make a drug joke and then a delivery from someone who will scatter the eggs outside a home? Oh, you know, like an intruder with a note from the Easter Bunny, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like a weirdo. (laughs) A person behind a Facebook account with the name Sarah Honey published the advertisement, was like, don't forget to pay me for the Easter eggs if you still want them. The flyer said prices for the Easter egg delivery range between $20 and $75. Parents were told they would have to pay in advance through Cash App, Zelle, or Venmo. Not a deposit or something like a good faith payment. I ran downstairs at five in the morning and looked out our front yard and there were no eggs, parent Kristen Claudiva said. So I was devastated and had no plan B. Wow. Some of the other victims said they didn't have a backup plan either and had to explain to their kids why there were no eggs on Easter morning. I texted and I called and I texted again and I called again. And then my last message was, hey, you were supposed to be there, grandparent. Gigi Capria said who fell victim to the scam. The parents said the person beyond the flyers did not reply back to their messages. Why would they? And then we found out had six Facebook pages. Capria said we noticed the Venmo account was gone all of a sudden. Capria posted about the scam on social media and quickly learned she wasn't alone. I find the post and I see all the comments from everybody else that Cohen said. Dozens of people commented under Capria's post on Facebook saying they had been scammed by the same person behind the Facebook account. Community members stepped up to keep the Easter spirit alive. Cool. We received messages from people saying, hey, I want to help. Hey, our church has extra eggs. Eileen Skates said whose sister fell victim to the scam. A lot of our working moms, single moms, and they were working Easter. So this was going to be the highlight of their day. Last minute Easter gifts from generous community members were delivered to some of the families who were impacted to help turn frowns into smiles. So that's what Easter is about, Skate said. Love, hope, and joy. Even though this thing happened that was terrible, it was kind of nice to see the community come together. It would have been better to see your eggs in the yard that morning, though. (laughs) W-E-S-H-2 has not heard back yet from law enforcement but some of the parents said they reached out to local police departments to report the scam. WESH2 also contacted the person behind the Facebook account that published the flyers, but has not heard back. They're gone. Type Lucius Fox. Fun show. Fun show. Fun show. That being said, I'm going to wrap this one up, but I'll be sure to talk to you guys very, very soon. Adios. All right, PK Slate.